We've been putting in a lot of work with George, training in the basics, but it's time to start putting things together and see if this hard work will pay off where it actually counts. In the real world, in a public environment with heavy distractions, that will be my focus today. I'm Zach George, and this is George. No relations. George has spent the last four months living in an animal shelter with minimal contact with other dogs or people. And it's my job to transform him from a wild and crazy dog to an incredible pet. Seems straightforward, right? Uh -uh. Holy cow. Not getting that ball. George is a dog like I've never known before. I don't know if I can let this dog go. Let go. This might be the single greatest transformation I have ever seen in a dog that I've worked with. The hardest thing about fostering a dog, you fall in love with them. This is reality dog training. Subscribe and click the bell so you never miss an episode. Well, today I'm hoping to give George arguably his biggest challenge yet. A fantastic way to stay motivated about training your dog is to sign up for a pup box subscription. That's not actually the toy, George. Fortunately, these are training specific items, which you need a lot of. George, you like that rabbit, I'm sure you do. This is a nice big bag of quality treats right here. Pup Box is a training centered box that you get every month. So this box we have here is the five month old box and you get so many detailed instructions. Here's a George toy. It's kind of a combination of a rope toy and then this like chewy plastic material, but it's still quite durable as you can see. It can stand up to a 70 pound pit bull, so I'm sure it can stand up to a five month old. Check out the water bottle dispenser. You put water there and you have a bowl with you. Get 50% off of your first pup box when you sign up for a three, six or 12 month subscription by going to pupbox.com slash Zach and entering code Zach. I'll have a link in the description. George is such a conundrum in his training. I mean, in some areas he really excels and he just impresses so much, but in other areas he still needs a little bit of work, which is why we are going in public today. I would expect today to be a little bit challenging for him. I mean, after all, my goal isn't to overwhelm him, right? My goal is to prepare an environment that is exactly optimized for him. Now, that's not always extremely easy, but I thought today I would probably work in a less distracting environment than we did last time, that we did really well up down here in the French Quarter, but I think I wanna get away from the narrow sidewalks and go to something that's a hybrid of the city and the park, and I've got just the place. You know, we have been routinely practicing stay when I open this crate here, and if you look around here, this is a busy New Orleans setting. It is early, but there's cars, there's noises, there's a lot going on. This is precisely the reason we teach stay in this situation. So let's practice. Look at me. Stay. I'm gonna go slow just in case he forgot. Yes, stay. To be clear here, yes just means I like what you're doing. It doesn't mean break your stay. Here, look at me. Stay. Okay, good man. I'm gonna make sure I have a good grip on him when he comes out there. And I usually like to make it a practice to have a carabiner on the end of my leash. Clip that to my belt just for redundancy. All right, buddy, let's go train. Whoa. Here's the squeaky sound of the streetcar over here. Things like that are gonna get dogs' attention. But right now, it looks like he's really fixated on the Mississippi River over here, really gathering a lot of sense. Got a lot of tension on the leash right now. His leash pulling has been an issue, but we're gonna hopefully address some of that today and see if he's made any progress. But you can imagine if you understand the Mississippi River, there are scents from all across the United States billowing up from that water. I imagine it must smell great to George at least. Good man, yes, good. Right here, as I was talking to you, he decided to stop pulling and to sit. I want to acknowledge that. Yes. Good. Just to warm up right now, I'm not going to ask much of him at all. You might notice I have my tug toy just in case, but right now I'm using some of his breakfast. So he's not in a strict stay or anything. Right now, he just needs to explore. He does see a bird. With George, it doesn't seem to matter whether the bird is big like a duck or small like whatever these small birds are. I wouldn't say he's overreacting or anything. He's just being a dog. He's being normal. Let's check for attention right now. See how he's distracted right now? Let's see, let's see if I can get his attention. Here are the birds right here. George, here. 
She's having a tough time. Yeah, they're in a frenzy right now. George, come here, sit. Okay, much less reliable right there. He's refusing sit, he's pulling, he's just not listening at all right now. Now, how much of this do I want to crack down on and insist that he listen to me? And then how much do I just want to give him an opportunity to adjust? Good man, how you doing? Nice dog walking by. So far, he did really well with that dog, though he is interested. George, here. Yes. So you can see there are moments where he'll listen. There are moments where he's like, I'm not listening. And I want to build on those moments where he does pay attention. Good boy. I am, yes. Oh, I, I do it for YouTube only. I don't, I don't charge for dog training. Yeah, yeah, I make, you, I make training videos for the world, free of charge. You can just go on YouTube, you can type dog training. We're very, uh, it's easy to find us, but you can also look for Zach George. Yep, and you'll get all the training information you need. Yes, what kind of training help do you need? This friendly stranger gave me a great opportunity to practice with George when a new person is nearby. And dogs can really tell when your attention is divided. So having light conversations while you still keep most of your attention on training your dog is a great way to teach your dog that you still expect them to listen to you even when you are busy listening to someone else. See you later, thanks for saying hi. Here we go. Here, sit. Yes. Great real life example there. You might wonder why I was giving him so many treats there while I was talking to that woman who was asking some dog training questions. And the purpose, he was really stable, he was sitting. I would love to be able to stop and talk to people when I have a dog like this with me. So I wanted to really communicate to him. I love that you're holding that position, you're being good. You're not lunging up to the woman trying to get attention from her. So look for opportunities when your dog is being good and you're conversing with someone in public. Try to do two things at once there if you can. Yes. Good boy. Looks like we have a jogger coming with dogs. Good boy. What's this? Can you give me a pretty? Yeah, okay, that's looking good. Good boy. Stay. George. See this? He's pulling, he's investigating the scent of the dog. Got another jogger coming by here. No dog this time, a little bit easier for him it looks like. Yes. Good boy. Can you give me a trick? I wanna see how pretty he's looking. Sit, pretty stay. I'd say that's looking pretty good. Yes. Okay, good boy. Good example there of using yes to say I like that and then okay to release him. So that was wonderful. Yeah, his, his sit pretty is looking fantastic. Lie down. Good, stay. Yes, ah, stay on the ground. Yes. He's a little reluctant to lie on the grass here, but he's doing it nonetheless, so I like that. Good boy. And so the whole point of today's training session is to get into a significantly different environment than we've been training in, just to proof a lot of what he knows. Maybe we'll go over some new stuff today. I'm gonna play that by ear. All right, I'm gonna try a roll over, because he's, <laughs> is that not incredible how, I don't think I've ever seen a dog take to roll over that quickly. Let's see if we can phase out that lure a little bit better. Lie down. Good, right there. So I start to lure him and he goes, yes, right into that rollover. That's really good, sir. Noticing this dog over here. Watch his ears. I wanna see if I can get those ears paying attention to me. Okay, George. Like before, when George became distracted, he's not immediately responsive when I call him, but I am intentionally giving him an extended period of time to register my request to see if he can think through this without too much guidance from me. Yes, good. Very good, yes. All right, there was an example. I was resisting saying, George, come, or anything like that, because I felt like he's probably not gonna listen to me. He was a little intrigued by that ground set. So instead of that, I chose to make a little sound that got his attention, at which time I was right there to be like, yes. I love that attention. Building attention like this in public is not something that's done overnight. And remember, George literally wasn't doing anything beyond sit when he first came to me, so. I wanted to start some heel training right now, but he's really interested in all these smells, and believe me, there are plenty of them, including other, it looks like a dog pee scent right there he's checking out. Come on. Hey, George, if I can get one glance, it'll let him know I like that. Yes, good. I wanna test his desire to play out here right now, though. Is he interested in playing tug? 
What's that? See that? I mean, he's a dog that loves to play. He loves to play tug. When your dog is clearly not interested in something that they reliably love at home, that is often a sign that your dog still needs some time to adjust to their new surroundings. She's like, man, just chill. Let me, let me take it in right now as evidence there by his yawning. He's like, no, I don't want to do that. I definitely want to let George satisfy his many curiosities while also occasionally asking him to do a few things here and there. So I'm going to give George another minute or two to observe the mighty Mississippi River. And now let's try again to see if he's interested in practicing heel for some treats. With George, I'm working on heel by practicing back and forth in one area like this at first, instead of continually trying to head forward in one direction. Direction. That way he can practice the mechanics of healing or even not pulling in new exciting places without the additional major distraction of brand new scents, sights, and sounds as we continue our walk. He's fixated on that bird. He was. Hey. Yes. That's one of those small moments that I'm talking about there. He went from being like, I don't really feel like doing leash training right now to, okay, I'll pay attention to you for a little bit. And so I really want to be there to be like, oh man, I'm going to make that worth your while. I even upped my currency a little bit and gave him some real meat instead of his breakfast because I saw he was struggling. Did you also see how we weren't trying to ask for five minutes of heal? We're just trying to get a few seconds because even though he does great with this in a distraction-free place, being out here and doing it is worthy of extra recognition by us. Also, sometimes he fixates on the treat. I want his eyes on me, not on the treat. That'll help us wean him off of treats later. Okay, good man. Whoa, buddy. All right, do you see this though? It, wouldn't it be great if he knew how to just sit and stay? While well, he's such a good dog in so many ways, I mean, he gets aroused sometimes and this becomes hard to manage because even though he's being a normal dog, he's 70 pounds of pit bull type dog. You know what I mean? So he's tough to manage and I don't know where his future home is going to be. I don't know what their strength is gonna be like. So it would be a lot better for George to know how to behave. Of course, there are gonna be times where he just needs to be a dog. One of my goals out here today is to try to make progress on his stay while in a real world setting. I mean, this is reality dog training after all. I would say that if I can get a 30 second stay out of him today, I will be more than happy. And you know, if we can do better than that, all the better. Sit. Good boy, stay. All right. Stay. I need a, I need a time, whoa, yes. Look at, yes. I mean, he was inches from us. Good man, stay. He's looking at these birds right here. Good man, yes. He's reaching deep right now. Okay, good. So I don't know, I don't think that was quite 30 seconds, but I wanted to release him before he failed. We had birds at close range. He was kind of teetering on the edge there. So I want to build on that. And to me, that was a really impressive stay because of all of the factors considered. All right, we're going for 30 seconds now. Sit. Notice I'm not using a treat in my hand to get his attention. He's past that. Stay. Good boy. I'm saying good to let him know I like it. I'll say yes when I'm gonna give him a treat. Stay. But I'm trying to make it the whole 30 seconds without having to treat him here. But I also wanna give him encouragement to let him know he's on the right track without having to treat him, you see? So that's how we use the word good. Here, up here, I want its attention. Okay. And so that was 30 seconds of sit, stay in a new place with mild distractions. I say mild distractions for him. There are some dogs where if you took them out here, this would be considered a major distraction environment. Okay, now let's see if we can do a real life application. He's pulling me because there's a dog. So let's say sit, stay, loose leash. Oh, lovely dog, Bull Terrier, nice. He's trying to smell, stay. I'm gonna reiterate, stay. Stay. George, here. Okay. I'd like to try and make that stay a little more impressive by doing it farther away. I want to know that he'll stay when I'm not right next to him. So I think that's something we can work on. Sit. Stay. 
See the difference though? Just being a little bit farther away makes the exercise harder for him. George, look at me. Yes. Okay, good boy. I'm gonna give him a nice extra big reward. I'm gonna give him some chicken. I'm gonna give him a handful of his breakfast here. So you'll remember we introduced stay for a period of time, stay with distance and stay with distractions. And we're really starting to merge those into the real world now. So we're getting those stays, but in this type of setting with the real world distraction, like the birds, like people walking by, like dogs, like the scents coming off the river and so on. But we're not in such an overwhelming situation like a crowded New York City street right now either where he might become overwhelmed. We wanna become proficient in places like this before upping the difficulty level. Why don't we see if George wants to do a couple of tricks now that he's had time to adjust. I kind of like that he's coming up on his hind legs for a separate trick but I want him to not confuse that with sit pretty, which is where he sits on his butt. No, I want to work on that. Stay. Uh, but I want, no, I want to sit pretty first. Sit. Stay. Oh, good. Here. Stay. Yes, okay. <laughs> sit pretty is looking so good. So I want to continue to teach George new things, not just because they're entertaining for you guys, but because dogs really find that gratifying when they start to learn new things. It really improves their communication. It fatigues them mentally and physically in a good way. Yes. Just rewarding random attention right there when he gives it to me without asking for it. I would love to teach him how to stand up on his hind legs and balance, much like sit pretty when we first started teaching him that we lured him like this right and you can see he's getting it stay yes okay good but let's see if we can take that to the next level now hey and i'm going to be battling with his attention and i'll be prepared to abandon this training session when teaching him something new because it's a little controversial teaching a dog yes something new uh, in a brand new environment, you know, I think he's got it in him, but we'll find out. But in general, you want to teach new tricks in a distraction free environment, but he's doing well. So I'm, we might be able to bypass that or not. We'll find out. What's this? You see this gone? Yes. Just going to reward him. You see how at first he thought we were asking for sit pretty, but then he's like, well, the treat's way up there. Come on up here. Yes, good boy. Just rewarding him for getting up on his hind legs. I know some of you will be wondering, aren't you encouraging his jumping? Uh, I would say no, because it's a very limited specific context. It's not like we'll be rewarding him when he jumps on people. This is the kind of skill that when you're training it to your dog, you don't want to overdo it. I mean, you want to be very mindful of their muscles and their joints and all of that. But in moderation, I think this can be a great thing to teach your dog. Yes, okay, holy cow, that was amazing for him just learning that. Some dogs will take to this easier than others. Like you kind of have to consider their anatomy and their physiology based on your specific dog. Okay, yes. We're even getting him to walk, which I think that's typically a little bit harder. So he's real comfortable walking backwards. That's pretty common. Yes, okay, good man, good boy. I think we'll stop there on that particular trick, but what a great start to teaching him to walk on his hind legs. Very impressed by him. Oh, well, looks like we got a couple of dogs coming back up. George. Here. Sit. Stay. Well done, sir. Look at me. Okay, not gonna get a look at me. That's, I'll take. Gotta wait for an automatic look at me. Yes, I knew it was coming. Okay, good boy. Did you notice his butt there, how it started to get up, but he like seemed to summon some inner discipline there and go back into the sit? So look how he's focused on those birds right now. There's a whole cluster of them. George, here, come. Yeah, good boy. All right, here you go. Nice big reward for that one. He's doing so well with birds today. Here. I mean, you can see that's a dramatic transformation for this particular training session, because that was a really tough distraction for him. For other dogs, they're like, I don't care about a bird. So you have to look at each dog case by case. Looks like we've got an off-leash dog as we're coming over here. So far, George is doing pretty well. George, come. No, come. Good boy. 
good. Able to call him off a dog. I always like that. Well done. So let's see how George does when we just go like on a normal walk here on a path with moderate distractions. If you call that a moderate distraction, I mean to a human, that's exciting to see. That is a big boat. Look at that. Okay, and there comes the pulling. So it's like once we advance into new territory, he really starts pulling ahead. And you don't just go from like pulling like this to perfect behavior. So you have to be tolerant of that in-between phase as you're working through it. We want to trend in the direction of better leash walking over this pulling over time. And so in the time that I have him, I don't know that we're going to be perfect on this. So I'm just trying to feel him out here. Like if he pulls for a little bit, will he eventually chill or does he just pull for 20 minutes straight? Okay. George, too much, buddy. So. The way that I hope to work between this phase of him pulling and walking nicely is just being able to reliably get his attention. George, here. Look at the ears. George, come, good boy. Here, good, yes. You might notice I'm kind of walking back and forth on this extended path here, just to really familiarize him with it and Hopefully he learns to behave and adjust. Good boy, George. I'm not insisting on a perfect heel, but I think we can make a lot of progress on it, you know? George, here. And right there, he's just, I mean, gosh. Don't pull me into the river, buddy. George. All right, so rather than just powering through this, I just have to let him explore these waves a little bit. He's really pulling towards those waves. That's what it appears to be. It's not just the water in general, but the moving water that seems to be getting his attention and the sounds and, of course, the smells. Let me see. Can I get his attention off the waves? I mean, I want to be fair to him. He may have never seen waves like this before. George, come. Sit. Whoa. A plus. Yes. Take it. Good work. Okay, George, let's continue. Shall we go? And look at that. He's doing much better here. Good. Bird, well done. And here, I think he's probably less interested in treats and more interested in exploring pea spots. Okay, gross. Come on, be civilized. That's disgusting. Come on, George. Well done, good real life leave it. I'm loving those. Leash walking is coming along nicely. When we first started walking, he was a lot more pulley, if that's a word. But now that he's had time to adjust, he's doing so much better. There's a lot of tension on the leash right now. George, come on, this way. Okay, so I didn't say his leash walking was perfect, but we're definitely trending in the right direction. Good boy. Not having to use treats with him right now. But he does pull ahead quite a bit there, so I'm gonna stop. Give me attention, give me a sit. Good boy, that's very good. Stay. I'm gonna give him a nice long stay. How y'all doing? <laughs> good boy, here. Well done, sir. Yes, okay. I'm gonna lure him back to my side. I'm gonna use a treat to encourage him here. George, here. Good. Look at me, yes. Okay, easy. Good, a little better that time. He adjusts well when you just take the time to communicate with him. Good, nice loose leash, love it. Let's turn around. George, come on. Good boy, easy, stay. Really good stay. Love that. I just threw that stay at him out of nowhere right there. And he looked at me and promptly responded. I'm really proud of his progress, but his leash walking still is far from perfect and that's okay, normal and expected. He's doing so well on his impulse control with those birds. I'm seeing a huge improvement with them. His tricks are just unbelievable. He really does learn fast. You know, if your dog is unruly in a place like this, I totally get it, I understand. You've seen me work with many dogs that were much more challenging than this out here. But I wanna point out that with George, we've been trying to avoid that by working him up to these more challenging environments. And he's responded really well. So if you're watching a video like this and you feel like, hey, there's no way my dog would be that good in a place like this, then find an easier place to work. 
and take your time. There's no rush. Knowing when to give your dog more freedom in the house is a struggle for a lot of people. I mean, for this reason right here, look at this. He's getting all over our props table. He's still not at the point where he can totally be trusted to be unsupervised in the house. So that's kind of one of the things I was hoping to make progress with him on today. Right now, keeping him near me is pretty easy if I have a toy or some great treats, as you can see here. A very common mistake that we all make is giving our dog too much freedom too early on in the training process. You might have noticed that's why I've been using a tie out with George in the house because we have a big open area here in the house and I need to keep them contained. So this is a nice crate alternative. It gives him lots of room and it phases in behaving in the house. Now in general, it's not good enough to just tie your dog out and hope that they're gonna understand how to behave. Obviously a dog like George has a lot of energy. So I'm gonna show you kind of the process I go through to phase in off lead time in the house so that they'll eventually become reliable and well behaved in the house. But when they're acting like this, it starts with exercise. So let's go outside real quick. Ready? And go. Toys like this are great too. You can play fetch with them. You can play tug with them. Good boy, yeah, go. So by getting this layer of energy out of him, it's gonna make my job a lot easier. With bully breeds like George though, you wanna be extra careful. They're brachycephalic dogs, meaning their breathing isn't always as efficient as some other dogs. And breathing's really important for dogs because that's how they stay cool. So you can see he's panting, a lot more relaxed right now. I appreciate that. So we're gonna go inside, sit. I'm gonna give him something to chew on now. Let me see, I'm gonna try and keep him off the tile for a little bit. This is a natural chew from our pup box. And so what I'm hoping he's gonna do is kind of relax, check out a little bit, and just chew on this natural chew for a bit. I have been giving him stuff like this while tied out, but what I'm trying to do here is just give him a few minutes without being restrained in the house, of being totally free and experiencing what's, what that's like. I'd like to be able to get up and walk back here, for example, while he enjoys his chew. Gonna hang out on the chair, supervising him nonetheless. When you're trying to teach your dog how to be good in the house and you're doing house training like this, you can get so much bang for your buck by choosing to address this training when they're in a really relaxed, pleasant mood. Now getting your dog to just kind of chill out in a contained space is only part of this. You know, we've talked in the past about doing secondary training sessions. That's where you must snap into training mode. You've seen us do that a few times with George when he has a barking outburst. Maybe he sees something in the park behind the house here. Or when he almost destroyed one of these shoes that I'm currently wearing. Thank goodness we intervened or else this would be a very different scene right now meaning that I would have different shoes on. And so you don't wanna let your guard down with a dog at this point in training when you're house training them. In terms of potty training with him, things have gone amazingly well. Cause I don't know when he would have gotten potty trained. He was a stray on the street. He was in the shelter for months. I think just by being consistent and taking him out very often, he's really put two and two together and he's been very easy in the potty training area. Now, one thing we should probably follow up on here is his does he resource guard? I'm gonna grab one of our pup box treats here. Good, just gonna drop that. Good boy. Sit. Gonna give it back. All right, here we go. Good boy. All right, he's done with that. And so these are little tests that I like to do. This was a great one, but just because, <laughs> Just because he did really well with that particular test doesn't mean he is all of a sudden free to roam the house. You literally start with a few seconds at a time of them being unrestrained and supervised before you graduate to more prolonged examples. But I'm gonna go ahead and put that back on right now. But the short answer to knowing when your dog is free to be left unsupervised is that you've given him so many supervised instances just like this that you're very confident that they're likely to behave well. You'll know when the time is right for your dog. It looks like George is starting to relax a bit more. So this is really, I mean, how it looks while you're sitting around doing your work or whatever it is you do with your life. Kind of keep an eye on your dog. They are eventually going to settle down. I mean, they have to sleep sometimes, but you can see if you just look into his eyes now, he's looking a lot more relaxed. I'm waiting for him to get just a little more chill. And then I'm gonna go ahead, yeah, just about like that. I'm gonna go ahead and take his 
lead off. I'm just gonna be quiet and calm here. Relax. Not trying to get him excited. You know, we, he's doing well with stay. He's learning this concept of relax because I'm saying the word relax to him in a specific context over and over again. He's relaxing. So here we have an early instance of what being off leash in an uncontrolled environment is like, at least in the house, uncontrolled in that respect. This is where it starts. I mean, this is the beginning step. And then it's a matter of really doing this over and over again, over many weeks, many months if necessary, or just a few days with some dogs perhaps. But with him, he's a wild child. He'll get into all kinds of stuff if you don't keep an eye on him. Another way that I'm really trying to set him up for success is right now, Indiana Jones and Inertia are upstairs taking their own nap time. I really want him to be the sole focus of my attention, at least as it relates to training dogs right now. It might be a good idea to have other pets in the house put up when you're, when you're doing this. For example, Inertia really likes to play with George. She could easily convince him to do a game of chase in the house, which with those two dogs, it would still wreak havoc throughout the house if they were doing full on chase. So definitely want to discourage that. The thing about teaching your dog to settle down and relax like this is that it really needs to be taught when they're naturally in that frame of mind, when they're naturally relaxed. You can't force it. However, the beauty of this is over time, as you teach your dog, relax. They're very likely to be able to put the pieces together and summon this behavior. But it's not taught quickly. We do this through capturing, remember. Capturing is where you catch your dog doing something that you like. They may not pick up a concept like like settle down and relax as quickly as they might pick up a luring exercise when we're teaching sit or lie down, for example. But contextually, they will learn over time, provided you, as their trainer, are super consistent. And it might not look like much, but this is really a significant step forward for him. We're, what, 30 minutes in now? And he hasn't changed his position, so pretty good. He's just not getting up. Can you relax? Just gonna ignore him here for a second and see if he just kind of checks out. Keeping an eye on him. Hoping he doesn't become amped up. Just ignore him, breathe. Just hoping he's gonna lie down. I don't feel like he totally understands what relax means just yet. Let's just wait and see what he does here. We're gonna ignore him. He's not in an excited state, which I like. So I think we have a reasonable chance of him just settling down. Okay, so it looks like he's probably not gonna go into a natural lie down and settle here. So Bree is going to give George another chew. Hopefully that'll encourage him to relax. We're gonna see what he does. The point here is to give George experiences off leash in the house when he is behaving in the way that we want. So giving him a chew is a great way to get him naturally to settle down and to be good on his own. It wouldn't be fair to George to just set him loose without a chew or a toy to occupy him and expect him to just naturally be good without practice. All right, good man, you did a good job. Time to go in your crate now. So I'm gonna put George up in his crate now because we have somewhere to go just for a little bit, and hopefully he does well. Come on, buddy. Look at that heel. That's how it looks. Good, I'll take it. I'm gonna throw a treat in there, very reliable way to get him and most dogs into a crate. That is, unless they've gotten in the habit of being forced into the crate, then it might be a bit challenging. That's why you really wanna resist the urge of forcing dogs into the crate. Here you go. Enjoy, buddy. We'll be back. I'll give you an update on how he does when we leave him alone another time. Get 50% off your first Pup Box when you sign up for a multi-month subscription by going to pupbox.com slash Zach and using discount code Zach. Subscribe to my channel, get a copy of both of my books, and follow us on Instagram, Facebook, and TikTok.
All the links are below, and we'll see all of you in episode 12. Not getting that ball, buddy.